Okay, so we're into the growth area. And uh, when I think about our economic models, guys, when we think about G for growth, um, we're going to be using this quite a lot in our famous Gordon's growth model. And uh, that's where we're headed when you think about the drivers of growth. And uh, they call this the long-term or long-term trend rate of growth. Now, it would be easy, wouldn't it, in real life, if we weren't, didn't have these, these uh, shocks that are coming into the, our system. And as mentioned here, we're recording this in London. And I guess from our perspective, and in the Eurozone, who would have predicted a few years ago would be mired within the Brexit uh, scenario here. It fills the news every day, and we have deadlines coming up, and we're certainly uh, very uncertain about, about what will happen here. So the, anticip the anticipated events would not have been foreseen and the idea of, uh, of how to plan, who would have predicted them. And when you look at the change of uh, the referendum result here in the UK, or a change of government around the world, uh, new policies coming in, um, and uh, thinking from a US perspective, for example, some of the tax changes that, that, that came through, and also some of the trade uh, changes affecting again the, the UK again with Brexit and the EU and also the US too so the idea of government policy the idea of uh, foreseeing how this is going to uh, play out very tough to do and uh, it's all around us when you think about changes happening in this way um, some of these uh, these shocks could be we mentioned here political in, in nature um, and there's a lot going on as we make this video as far as trade, trade there with different parts of the world and trade agreements. Uh, also here in the UK with, with the trade with the European Union and uh, the uncertainty about borders and tariffs and everything else as, as well too. On the technology side, often talk about the total factor productivity, goes the idea of, of new technology when you think about electric cars. And, uh, and, and drivers in terms of blockchain and fintech, many of these things are changing the way, the way we work and the way we live as well. Um, and then some of, the, some of the changes are forced upon us, whether it might be a, a weather or a natural disaster, an earthquake, a hurricane, that uh, they can be a trigger often for initially reducing growth, but perhaps then regenerating and improving infrastructure and, and starting again. Uh, that can give you a big stride forward as well. Now, uh, imagine the difference with, with technology in a country where you're able to suddenly turn unprofitable resources into a new supply, whether it might be fracking, for example, here coming in as well. So, so, so this trend rate of growth, some of these things are positive, but I guess something like a, a shock, like a financial crisis to the system here. Uh, again, if consumers uh, heavily hit and confidence in jobs, that can have... Um, uh, quite an impa impact in initially as well. Now, the book talks about types of crisis. I wanted just to mention this for a moment here. The type of, of crisis that leads to a reduction in output in the short term is called a type one. So a reduction in economic output in the short term is a type one crisis. If it's a, a decrease in the long term trend rate of growth, that's called a type two crisis. Um, and interestingly, uh, if you have both one and two, you can guess what you're probably going to call this. We call this a type three. Um, and uh, they give the example in the, in the text about the Eurozone. Um, yeah, in the Eurozone, there was this, uh, this example of a type one and a two, type two. They call that a type three crisis. Okay, so what about the influence of the government in terms of government policies to try and, uh, and get that growth going here? One of the main ideas is to let the markets be free of too much in intervention. Try and promote that free trade and capital flows. Try and avoid the, these restrictive measures coming in. Um, again, the lower the taxes, the better. Then we're rewarded for all that hard work that we're doing. Businesses are rewarded as well. So try and stimulate the economy in this way. Back to our business cycle, it's coming very shortly, but the idea of being, of being counter-cyclical here is very important. Uh, when we're in, our, in that kind of boom period uh, here, inflation's rising, uh, interest rates are rising as well. And one of the ideas here is to try and slow down, you know, slow down the economy uh, here. Uh, and then when we're kind of in that downturn here, 
you're trying to speed up the economy, trying to get the economy going in that, in that way too. So well, the, the book talks a lot about the business cycle, and we know it isn't as easy as it sounds. Uh, when you try and slow down the economy in a boom, perhaps you, you're too restrictive in this way, and it can, it can be very tough to get that uh, accurate as, as you'd want it to be. And uh, this problem, guys, of having a current account deficit and a fiscal deficit, they call this the twin def deficit problem. This was more of an issue uh, in the older reading, uh, not mu much mentioned too much in the new version. Okay, so we have lots of ideas for forecasting um, growth rates. Um, and uh, the idea of discounted cash flow models is coming up uh, with our bond yields in a moment here. And uh, yeah, the, yeah, the idea of looking at uh, who benefits from high growth rates, well, guys, equity benefits from, from high growth rates. When we're in that kind of down part of the cycle here, pretty much towards the bottom of the cycle here, we're anticipating it starting to rise again here. That's the time when we switch over to our equities. So, so CFL Level 3 has a lot of a, a talk about uh, the safety of perhaps bonds and, and some commodities, and then switching back to growth again when the signs look a lot more, more opt optimistic. So that idea of the minute uh, signs of growth appear, that kind of flight over to, to risk once more. However, once the, the signs of recession coming in, uh, the safety of bonds and things like, uh, like commodities as well too. As the economy starts to really pick up, um, then of course inflation starts to become more of a problem. Okay, let's have a look at the ideas for the, for the growth rate. And this is quite a, a, a famous one uh, here. We've got these, uh, these, these uh, elements here. So number one, I guess we have the, yeah, our labor, labor input firstly. So labor input, the first one. Um, and we have our capital per worker. And our third one, our total factor productivity. And uh, in the past, you might have to aggregate some numbers here uh, in the exam, given some percentages here. But thinking about growth in the labor force, think about what's happening uh, around us, guys, here. The main thing here, number of workers. Now think about where we, where we are in your country that you're in the moment. Things like, for example, your, the age. Think also about migration coming in as well. Um, also here, think about, for example, uh, social norms like, for example, uh, pensions. Uh, do you have great pensions? We certainly don't here in the UK. I'm probably going to have to work for a lot longer. So your average uh, kind of time in the workforce is probably going to have to have to be longer. And then, guys, the choice here. They talk about leisure. They use the idea of, of leisure decisions. They, they use this term here. Maybe that comes to retirement as well. At what point do you decide you want that leisure, you want to stop working? But the, the growth in the labor force and the labor participation rate comes to the labor, labor input. They have this term in the book called capital deepening. Guys, okay, capital deepening, I'm going to mention here. Interesting term. Capital deepening is the idea of investing capital per, per worker. Because whether that might be in the equipment that they have, the technology that they use, um, the ability for them to be more productive in their role, the technology, uh, if it's machinery, that they're, they're using as well. So capital per worker, um, I guess that might fit with automation as well, that a lot more automation is going on, and we have a lot less workers and a lot more, lot more machinery going on as well, a lot more automation. And then finally, the, the te technological process here, the TFP, uh, as, uh, as technology improves, so does our, our overall growth as well. Now, we have a number of methods for forecasting. Number one is going to be in our econometrics. Um, and we're thinking here about our, our forecasting through two main models. Guys, they talk about structural models. And they also talk about reduced form models as well. And for structural models, they have a direct link, a much more of a direct link to the economic variables, guys, to the economic yeah, drivers. Whereas with the reduced form models, it's a lot more data driven. 
And uh, these uh, together form, I guess, quant, quant type models coming in here. We're going to have a look at a few of these uh, ourselves as well. Um, so yes, you can incorporate a number of variables here, um, but I guess you've always got that model risk of any kind of model too complex and quite time consuming. Are the data relationships going to remain? Um, a bit of a question mark uh, are coming in here. I mean, many models over the crisis period didn't work too well. Um, just for example, here in the risk area, the VAR model, value at risk, um, kind of been questioned quite a bit. We didn't build in, for example, the time period uh, wasn't built in very accurately, uh, and normal distributions were used as well. So our record using these models hasn't been too great for forecasting these, these recessions. We could also go back to an old favourite this time, our economic indicators. Uh, this forward look, kind of a forward look at what might be happening with the economy uh, coming in. So our leading indicators, of course, forward looking, and then the lagging ones telling us uh, afterwards. When you look at the, at the uh, forward looking ones, guys, things here like, like stock prices, of course. Um, also other examples like manufacturing uh, metrics. Yeah, different manufacturing metrics. Um, also things like um, inflation, interest rates, monetary data as well too. And I guess one of the main ones that that's uh, this forward looking our, our business cycle one here. Think about our stock prices. When we're in the kind of the, this downturn here, that uh, stock prices would start to kind of indicate the bottom of that, uh, of that trough. That's the time to invest now and invest when the stock prices start to start to move, they're signposting or signaling kind of we're at the bottom of the trough. And if you invest here, we know you're investing, of course, at the at the low point. Um, here, the, at the kind of boom period, they're kind of signaling we're at the top of the of the cycle. They're in, they're signaling here to start uh, preparing for the downturn in this way. So, so again, a pretty poor record in predicting these turning points in the in the economy. Let's uh, bring in a slight little extra here, a diffusion index. Guys, had this term, a diffusion index. Okay, so a diffusion index is where you have a number of these uh, indicators in one index. Maybe you say you have nine or ten, and uh, how many of them are indicating one direction, how many indicating the opposite direction. So the idea that if you have perhaps eight out of nine or, or nine out of ten indicating um, more like a downturn, then it tells you a lot, a lot more than one single one. And uh, we're heading now to a lot less scientific areas. We're bringing in the human judgment coming in here. Um, yeah, this checklist does bring in the subjective human judgment coming in where, well, in fact, even in the text, that they're not giving us too much detail. They're saying, you know, well, create your own list of factors. Um, and uh, talking here about it's flexible enough for you to choose whichever one you, ones you want here. Uh, use your own judgment to create a mix of different metrics here. But it isn't telling you too much about which ones to use.